Hello, my name is Nicole, and I will be guiding you through elementary from signing up to creating your first interactive story. Before we begin, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what elementary is and how it could be used in your classroom. So first of all, elementary is a platform, so it's online. You can access it on computer, tablets, Chromebooks, anything that has internet access, and you can write and code interactive stories using professional illustrations and sounds. Elementary has been used in K-12 classrooms around the world. It has been used in different subject areas, ranging from English language acquisition to foreign language learning, coding classes, as well as special education and even science. So it has thousands of illustrations that you can use, multiple characters, some of them have different expressions, you can add background music, sound effects, and even your own voiceover. You can add animations, which is a big plus for um, a lot of kids. And you can also code your stories to have multiple endings or to play almost like a game. So elementary has been used in after school programs as well um, for STEAM purposes. Uh, here we have a case study of a 12th grade EFL teacher um, using it in her English class in South Korea. We have it used to create chemistry stories as well as in kindergarten classes. And in general, it's just fun. It's creative. It gives students a sense of agency that they can make a story that is very real, relevant, and personal for them. And here are some stories that you can read on elementary that are quite wonderfully fun. And below we have our Twitter community that has been talking about how they've been using elementary in the classroom. Do follow us if you have not already and join in our conversations. So let's go back to the top and start creating for free. First, you will be um, greeted with this pop-up that asks you to join a classroom. So we're not a student, we don't have a class code, we're just going to create our account normally. So creating a username, I'm gonna say my username is awesome. My email is contact at elementary.io, my password. And then I'm gonna hit submit. You can also sign in through Google Sign In or Facebook as well if you don't want to remember your password. So that's also an option. Great, so now I'm signed in. And I'm gonna go and jump into writing my first story. So there's a button here called Write a Story. There's also a button in the top right-hand corner called Write. Both of them go to the same place, where is uh, your dashboard that contains all of your stories. So right now we have no stories created. So let's start writing. Okay, so the first time you enter elementary as a new user, you will be greeted with this tutorial. And in this tutorial, it will show you how to animate a dragon. Let's get started with this tutorial. So the first step is to click on the animation icon and to drag the dragon onto the page. So you can move, resize, and scale the dragon however you want. And when you're done, you just press the next button. Now you will click the blue button on the top of the screen called Event Graph. And this will take you to the Event Graph side of the page. So I'm gonna stop here and give you a quick overview of what the Event Graph is. The Event Graph lets you code by connecting blocks together. So every page on elementary has two sides. The first side is the layout where you can design your page with 
the different text elements, the images, and the backgrounds. And the event graph is really where you can code your interactions. So we're going to get started by getting our first function, which is animate. So functions are green. They tell you what to do. They tell the computer what to do. In this case, uh, we want to animate something. So when do we want to animate? We want to animate on page start. So the event that we're going to grab is on page start. Now the last block we're going to get is the animation um, object. So I'm going to move these around so they look pretty and press the next button when I'm ready. So we have three blocks on the page, but they're not connected. We need to connect the blocks in order to make them work. So we would need to take the white triangle of on page start and connect it to the white triangle of the animate block. Then we need to connect the purple circle of the dragon to the purple circle of the animate. So now it says on page start, we're going to animate the dragon, but we haven't specified what animation it is going to run. Right now it says none. So click on the none box and select flying. The dragon only has one animation, which is flying, but other characters have multiple animations. It could be talk, run, idle, jump, try it out. So now we're going to hit preview. And preview makes the code run so you can see what happens. And here we have our dragon flying. Great. So we're going to exit out of here and exit the tu tutorial. So the event graph here is a case of using visual coding. We use blocks connected together to specify what our code is. Now, visual coding is very real and relevant in the world. It's used not just as like baby steps, but also in the professional world. You may or may not be familiar with the games such as Fortnite, um, Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, these games, what they all have in common is they're created using an engine called Unreal Engine. And Unreal Engine has a visual coding component to it that looks actually very similar to this. So uh, we're going to go back to the layout side and continue creating our page. So let's get a background. Um, you can drag backgrounds onto the page or you can click on backgrounds to change them. So like so. And we can scroll down to see all the different backgrounds that are possible. You can also search for a background or just choose a color as well. You'll notice that we have some images that have the pro label to them. These images are only available for premium accounts. So we have two tiers, mainly of premium accounts. One of them is the individual hobby plan, which is for individual users, as well as an educator plan, which is more geared towards teachers. And the teacher account allows you to have all the pro images, um, up to 90 students that also have the pro images, as well as some other features like student analytics, etc. So you just take a look at some of the different images that are possible. And let's go back to the free tier and uh, choose an image from here. Great. So for a story, let's some, add some text. You can take some text and directly type what you want. Okay, so here we have, once upon a time, there was a dragon that liked to eat sheep. And we can change the font color so it appears um, it's easier to read. And we can also change the, the font style. So there's quite a few different types of fonts that you can use. And you can play around with that. And just like in PowerPoint or in Google Slides, you can change the 
the text alignment, you can bold it, you can change the opacity, um, you can add a shadow effect if you wanted to, or change the size. You can also change the size this way um, by resizing it according to the, the corners, and you can also just rearrange the text like so. Great, and let's add another image. There's quite a few images that you can use. You can also sort through the images here, the image categories. So let's say I want a character and I want a, I want a creature and see what kind of characters appear that are creatures. So this guy's kind of funny. We'll add him. And then you can add some speech bubbles. You can move the speech bubble around. And say, hello. Okay, great. So you could really have fun with digital storytelling. Um, some, some teachers and students only use this side. They don't even go to the event graph side. Um, but you're always going to have maybe one student that goes here, plays a background sound, and then other students around them want to do the same thing. And then you'll have students teaching other students as well. And we have more integrated tutorials to show you how to do different things. For example, how to play a recorded sound, how to fade in an object, how to play a text effect. and how to use a text variable. Now, this example is pretty fun because you can create personalized stories. And these are stories where you, as the writer, can put an input field prompt asking the reader something. So for example, you can, in this case, ask the reader to type in their name. And then you can set this input name to be equal to a text variable. And then everywhere in the story, the reader's name can be replaced in the story. So um, do take a look at one of our videos on how this works exactly if this interests you. But basically you can create stories that play like games and like a choose your own adventure. So that's quite fun. And all of these integrated tutorials are just like the animation tutorial that we did. They're all step-by-step step and guide you through the entire process. And if you need more help, we do have some video tutorials that go through more of the functions on how to animate different things on elementary. So once you're done, you can just hit the publish button, fill out the details, publish the story, and then it will be live on elementary and you can share it with your friends, read it or embed it on your own website or blog as well. So I think that's it. A very brief uh, overview of how to create your own story. And please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And let me know also what other tutorials you would like to see in the future. Thank you so much and have fun creating your story on elementary.